Welcome to NAPOD, where we provide NA speaker meetings and workshops in a podcast. We are an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us to be self-supporting by visiting NAPOD.xyz. Look for the donate link and drop a dollar or two in the virtual basket. If you're also an AA or have friends that are, please tell them about our other podcast, Sobercast. Sobercast features AA speakers and workshops in the same format as NAPOD. We upload a new speaker every day, and it's easy to subscribe by searching for Sobercast, that's two words, on any podcast player app, or go to Sobercast.com. Enjoy the podcast, and thanks for listening. I'm clean by God's grace the people that's in this room. And it's a blessing to know that no addict seeking recovery need ever die from the horrors of addiction. And I always ask God to do for somebody else what he's done for me in this process. That's to allow him to hear a message of hope and let him know the promise is freedom. That finally we ain't never got to use a drug again. It's, and it's been a real blessing for me um, since God brought me back to the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous 14 years ago. And... Um, if I haven't enjoyed anything else, I definitely enjoyed being clean. Um, I'm from the capital area. It's a blessing to be a part of the capital area. And truly, it's a blessing to be a part of anything that's positive. Um, I need to always remember what God brought me from and what he's doing for me now. And all the things that's going on in my life that... uh I really ain't got nothing to complain about. But in this path, man, it's like it's been a journey for me. Um, and it's been a learning process. And originally I wasn't on the list to share, but they told me in Narcotics Anonymous, if somebody asks you to share, never turn it down. Uh, and this is the first time I've ever been asked to share at a convention, and the topic that I've been chosen to speak on is cockiness, and when Gary just asked me that, I said, Lord, why he asked me to share something like this here, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't with this first thing this morning, you know what I'm saying, I'm just rolling out of my grave, just had breakfast, you know what I'm saying, I feel a little tired. But I found out that God got a way of working through people. And a lot of times people can see things in you that you can't see in yourself. So I'm grateful that he asked me to share. I guess um, cockiness must be a good title for me. Uh, I don't think I'm cocky, but I guess others might might, might think that way. But I need to share that, that cockiness, man, that's, that's, that's real deep, man, because I find out for myself, um, cockiness can take you to a place, man, where is that you can think that you got it all. You can think that everything is so well, and really it isn't. But you can put yourself on a plane, man, and like, um, uh, like you floating on a cloud and, a, and that cloud ain't going to bust. And everything is always in control and maybe deep down inside you really need to be asking for some help. And not wanting to get humble to ask people for help because there's an image of the person that you are. But I think that I might have been all my life. So I find out, like, this is a, a process for me, even when I was using, even when I get clean, when God got me clean. And um, being cocky. I just always thought, man, that uh, being on the up was the way to be. I come up with some people, man, that I thought that... Uh, That was all right, but I know today, when Gary asked me about this, about sharing on this title, I just went through a, a, a reflection of my whole life just that quick of where I come from. 
I need to say that when I came up, I was um, hanging around with some people. Pimps was pimps. Whores was whores. And men was the idol. And I was a little young guy. You know what I mean? I've always hung, hung around older people. And this is how I learned to play around in the streets. I went one time to see a movie called Superfly, and when I come out of that movie, that was it, man. It's like, God, that took me on a ride. You know what I mean? And not really trying to abuse it, women or anything, because that was never my thing. But um, it was just a, a thrill. Women would do anything because that's what a man said to do. I never really liked it. That was just part of the game, I guess. You know what I'm saying? And um, from that point on, even coming into recovery, man, it's like I guess sometimes I feel as though, as though that I'm cocky. But um, it's been a learning experience. When God got me clean after a few years, I used to see people get into relationships, you know what I'm saying, and um, I thought one day it was time for me to get into a relationship, and I asked God to place somebody in my life, and through this young lady coming into my life, I got sick, and they had to take two-thirds of my colon out. As a matter of fact, me and this young lady, we go back since junior high school. And uh, this young lady was, was there for me. Like a, like a mother would raise a child. She was a very humble lady. She would wash me. She would bathe me. She would do anything that it was. And I, you know, I just thought, I didn't know. She loved me more than I thought she ever did. You know what I mean? And I took that for granted. Uh, a few years after that, God blessed us to get married. Through me being cocky, not wanting to live a spiritual life or live the way God would have me to live, knowing that I knew about God, but I took God for granted. I took my relationship for granted. I took my friends for granted with different things that they would say. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, I just wanted to do shit my way. And um, they say, be careful what you ask for. And God blessed me to get married. Uh, it's been eight years. The marriage has been in turmoil for a few years. Behind me being cocky. Behind me going outside of my marriage. And I found out something. Like they say, that one is too many and a thousand is never enough. That ain't only with drugs. <laughs> you can mess around here and have somebody in your life and don't be faithful to them. And go outside of that relationship or outside of that marriage. And it's like picking up a drug. And sometimes it was very hard for me to put the lid back on it. Deep down in my heart, I really wanted to stop what I was doing. But me running on ego, this is the way that I'm supposed to do things. Or I do shit because I'm mad at you. Or you said something that I didn't like. Or some old kind of lame excuse. I ran with it. And it just cost me dearly. Uh, I never thought that it would come to the point that it would come to the, to a divorce. I find out the cockiness, man, can put you in a situation, man, where you can isolate. Cockiness can put you in a situation where that your self-esteem begin to drop because you think you're all that. But it's just like like when I first started using drugs. The disease never told me at the end of my addiction, man, you was going to be homeless, jobless, penniless, helpless. Thank God it hasn't come to that point through my divorce. Uh, 
A lot of days I pray and I just ask God sometimes, change a heart before it's too late. But I done found out through me being cocky, she got a different heart. She don't want to change. So I find out that I can't be as cocky as I thought I was. But I had to get humble. And now I'm to the point now I got to accept some things that I really don't want to accept. Because my, uh, through me doing all that I was doing, I just thought that, well, we took a vow to death do his part. And that was the vow that we were supposed to live. But not knowing what you, well, knowingly, what you did, you was wrong, it's two left shoes. So how can you expect somebody to feel and just hold on, and now all of a sudden you want to have a change of heart and want to work this thing out, and she ain't feeling it. And it hurts on a lot of days, you know what I'm saying? But I found something out through this, through this process here is that when God put somebody in your life or good people in your life, it would be within your best interest. Calm down. Try to listen to other people. But uh, through it all, it's going to be all right. Because I'm learning through this cockiness, I'm getting humble. God got a way to make you get humble. Because you don't want to listen. You want to run on your self-will. I used to hear a long time ago, self, self-will self runs riot. And that's what's been, what had happened in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, just running, man, and just, just doing what the hell I want to do all the damn time. And I feel as though now that if God had wanted you to do all the things that you wanted to do, and it's all about you, and she had a voice in different things, and I ain't want to hear because I felt, well, I'm the man of the house. But that ain't the way it's supposed to be. I found out for myself by me being so cocky, not wanting to communicate, you know what I'm saying? And she got just as much right in, in everything else as I did. You know what I mean? But uh, they told me a long time ago that my thinking was suspect in the beginning. Somewhere in our literature it says none of us is capable of, of consistently making a good decision. And I thought, listen, I, I thought that being that I was the head of the house that I'm making all the right decisions. It ain't like that. So I'm learning through um, being cocky. There's got to be a lesson in this somewhere down the line. So I'm learning through this cockiness, man, like uh, just hold on. Get humble. Stay in prayer. And these are some of the things that I didn't want to do before. But I just got to stay in prayer regardless of what happened. Except the situation... For what you made it. Because what damn sure wasn't her. It was you. And somewhere down the line, when all this is all over with, when the smoke finally clears, if God should bless you again to get married or to have another woman in your life, don't be so damn cocky. Listen to somebody else. Um... And the thing about it, I was being cocky about we was coming to the convention. And uh, my thing was, listen, man, y'all ain't been with each other. Because I'd be listening to my thinking sometimes. Y'all ain't touched each other in X amount of months and this and that. And now y'all getting ready to go your separate ways. Um, so now this is going to be the last hurrah. First, I wasn't with that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I was all up in my head about it. Who in the hell she thinks she is going to do something like this here? And because uh, I'm, 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 I'm putting all the focus on me, and still not wanting to focus on her feelings. You know what I'm saying? And I said, uh, "Well, we ain't been together all this damn time. Ain't no sense in us being together now. You've been back there in the back bedroom. Stay the hell on back there. That's how I was thinking. You understand what I'm saying?" But I found out, man, like in reality, you got to be held accountable for the shit that you done done. So why not get humble? If that's what she want to do, do it. And I don't feel bad about it.
Because a lot of times I, I found out if I do something that I don't want to do, and the end result of it is, nine times out of ten, it ain't as bad as I thought it was going to be anyway. So I find out today, man, you know, it's like, uh, it's going to be all right. And I ain't got nothing really bad to say about her. Because it ain't about us. It's about the shit I done did, man. Me wanting to run all the damn time. But see, I, I just get attracted to shit. And I ain't, I'm a person that I guess people can identify. I still act out on impulse. If I see something and it look good to me, and I think I can get away with it, well, yep, I'm gone. I never think about the end result of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I always thought I was 50 cents slick and a dollar quarter smart any damn way. So, and I put this same thing into recovery. 14 years being clean. And I find out, man, like, uh, if you really don't utilize this program and work this program to you, to the best of your ability, the same thing you did when you was using, you can do it now. But being clean. But then I always ask myself, are you really clean? Is your spirit really clean? How can you sit around and do some things and come home to an individual? How do you really feel? And I find out, man, like on nights, man, when you can't sleep, and that's that spirit working in. Something you ain't been doing right. Getting up two, three times a night, going to the bathroom. Normally, you just lay down and go to sleep, and when you sleep, you sleep till it's time to get up. That cockiness, man, will rob you of a whole lot of things, man. You know what I'm saying? But I'm finding out, too, man, like um, in the midst of this storm, things are starting to settle down now. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm learning to stay out of my head. Using my sponsor more than, I sh than I've been using um uh, and just stand in prayer, stand humble. Uh, so I always ask myself, it's like, uh, if God bless you to get married again tomorrow, what would you do different than you did the first time? You know, and I really can't worry about that right now. I just, man, I just want to uh, continue on to stay on this path. Surround myself around some positive people. And just like they say, like, um, on our literature, call before you fall. That's some shit I should have been doing. They ain't talking about just, just drugs. Because I done found out, man, and I, and I really admire people, and I always tell my sponsor, man, you know, man, you know, I admire the hell out of you, man, you understand what I'm saying? Man, you've been married X amount of years, man. You've never been outside your marriage, man. And I'm looking forward to one day, man, that I'll be able to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Um, and through all that, man, I done, I done been to some counseling and some everything, man. And I find out, man, the final analysis that you just ain't ready. And I find out, man, there has to come a point in time in an individual's life, man, where it's that he's got to grow up. There's a little boy that's still inside of me, man. I find out, man, it just ain't there yet. And that cockiness, man, is something, man, I'm telling you. Um, but in spite of it all, man, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, man. In spite of all, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm really grateful about is that me and this young lady still can be friends. Because I don't want to be cocky and for my marriage to go out on a note that people hate each other. Uh, because that's not the way that God wants me to live. So I find out, man, you understand what I'm saying? I got the whole fast of what I did. I can't continue on to beat myself up for it because it's something of the past now. And it has to be a learning experience in it. And thank God through all of it that it, it could have came out a lot worse. Because I remember my wife told me one time, you don't know what I might have done when I found out that you was cheating on me. I could have killed you. I didn't think about it at the time. 
She could have poisoned me any damn thing. You understand what I'm saying? I let her eat. But I was sitting back one day and I was I was I was thinking, I said, boy, you know, you know, you done put yourself in a hell of a situation here now, you understand what I'm saying? So man, you can't be cocky about this thing. You don't know if I went if I was gonna go back out and I was gonna use again. How could you put me in a situation like this? This thing is rough, man, sometimes. You know? Because being cocky, man, can destroy. And I find out, man, that this disease, man, it don't stop. And it wants to destroy, steal, break up homes. I'm talking about being clean. I ain't talking about using drugs. And it's still, man, you understand what I'm saying? It don't want me to be happy. It will find things, man, if I lit to it, I got problems. You know what I'm saying? But, um, and I heard somebody say a long time ago, well, and I know for myself, the last time I had a problem was December the 17th of 1990, because that was the last day I used a drug. This is a situation that I'm going through. But God is still good in spite of it all, oh, man. You understand what I'm saying? He is still good. And he still loves me enough to know, to say, well, listen, man, you done made a mistake. You got to dust yourself off, man, and take the bitter with the sweet, man, and just keep on going. But remain friends with that young lady because you never know who you're going to need. Because I hear so many people say, man, I don't need you. Man, you don't know who you're going to need because it's the very people that you say that you don't need, God got a way of putting them right there for you. Now get humble. And it hurts me on a lot of days, man, because I'm so used, man, like, in my household, saying something to my wife. She in one bedroom, I'm in another bedroom, and I be saying, man, look, you did it to yourself, boy. But it's all right, though. You know what I'm saying? It's all right. And I just hope through everything, man, that God continue on to strengthen both of us, man. And, um, like I said, we remain as friends, man, you know what I'm saying? Because um she's good people. So through all that cockiness, man, I'm learning, man, like I said earlier. Be humble, man. I done been humiliated now, you understand what I'm saying? I done been humiliated enough and I done beat myself because can't nobody else beat me up like I done beat my damn self up anyway. So I done beat myself up enough, man, you understand what I'm saying? So now, because I was struggling with that thing, man, look, I ain't let my wife go, man, because look, we made a vow. But now I done got to a situation, man, and a level, man, is that you got to let go, you got to let God, baby. You got to let God work this thing out now. So I told my wife, I said, you know, if it came time for us to go to court in the last hour that you said, let's work it out, I'm more than willing. But she ain't feeling that shit. But it's all right, though, and I still love her as a friend. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed that Gary asked me to share about cockiness. Um, I hope somebody may have gotten something out of this here. Don't do what I did. Trust me when I tell you, because there's a price that you're going to have to pay. And there's some negative consequences that you're going to have to pray. That you're going to have to pay. You know what I'm saying? And I always just thought, man, that uh, that I had to be the man. It ain't like that. Get humble, man, and let God work it out. That's all I got. All right. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please help us improve our ranking so others can find us by putting a review on Stitcher, iTunes, or your favorite podcast index. Napot is ad-free thanks to the folks supporting the show with a dollar more per month. If you enjoy listening, you can join them by going to napot.xyz and looking for the donate link. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.